Inspired by sound. Hello, hello. Welcome to another Inspired by Sound video. This one is quite interesting and quite different. I think you'll like this a lot. I know I do. And this was another user request from somebody who I'm sorry, I can't remember, but they did ask. So let's get into it straight away. Native Instruments Massive starts off this piece with great big chords and it's controlled, the expression of which is controlled by this mod wheel over here like we've seen before in previous videos. brings huge expression and beauty. I love the sound so much. Really brilliant. Isn't that wonderful? So it's quite dark when I have it at the very beginning of the sound, uh, bottom of the mod wheel here. You can barely hear it. You can just hear my hands on the keys. And if I want to bring it out, make it more angry, make it noticeable, and it gets annoying. So it's nice to have a happy medium somewhere in the middle here, because then you can play it and enjoy it at the same time. The top is sort of very emotional and loud. I could literally just play that sound for hours, but I won't anyway. So this makes up the chords of the piece. Um, and today we're talking about a piece called Watch the Tray. And the name will be explained a bit later on. So that's the first sound. The next sound is also from Massive, and it's a bass sound. It also responds to Modwell in some strange ways. At the bottom, move it up. It changes the whole nature of the sound. Yes, it does. Rise and hit. We've seen this before, have we not? Rise and hit. And this only comes at the very, very end of the piece, so we don't have to talk about that much. The more exciting stuff, uh, there are two tracks after this, which is tracks four and track five, and we will talk about them in a minute because that is the bit that you're gonna to wanna to know about. The last two tracks are just drum tracks. And another drum track. So let me first um, solo the first drum track just so you can hear what it's like. It plays quite an integral part. Standard stuff there, and then there's another track here doing a bit of uh, hi hat work and that sort of thing. And together, if I solo them together, very important. Got to have some good drums in a piece like this. Right, let me now go back to the top and quickly show you these chords. doesn't come in at the very beginning of the piece because you first hear the that now the chords come in and they're at moderate mod wheel level you see moderate
and the bass does come in quite early as well. Let's see where that comes in. One bar and one beat. Playing quite gently there. Modulus probably down at the bottom. I'm just going to put the chords and bass together just, just so you can hear those things. That's what those do. Now, let me tell you about how this track actually got started, shall I? It's a very interesting story. And if you have TLDR syndrome, where the description uh, is concerned and you don't want to read all about it, I will tell you in text as well, or in voice. So, there are two other tracks in here that we haven't yet talked about. There's the sound of a watch, Apple Watch charging case, which my wife gifted me for Christmas last year. And there's a the sound of a tea tray that I recorded in a hotel in Wales. And this track, being Watch the Tray, is about the tea tray. But I also thought I'd throw the watch case sound in as well, because they have been turned into playable instruments by the very kind Derek Lane um, of Lane's Audio. And I have linked to his website in the YouTube description, because he is instrumental, if you'll pardon the pun, in getting this track to production. I couldn't have done it without him. Or at least not as easy. So let's discuss these two sounds that are really important. The tray, to begin with. Tea tray. So what happened with this is I was away for the weekend in a hotel in Wales and I noticed that the tray on which all the tea accoutrements and coffee things sat dinged when I knocked my wedding ring against it. I didn't do this on purpose, by the way, even though, I yes, I admit I am that geeky, but I didn't do it on purpose. It just happened to be on the table and I knocked into it and I realized that the edge of the tray, the rim was raised, rang when I hit it. And I thought, oh, that's really cool. What can I do about it? Oh, record it. So I recorded it. And it was great. And I thought, oh, let me save these uh, recordings as best I can and then send them to somebody who can turn them into something playable. So I have got something playable here with me today. Very interesting sound. So in the beginning of the piece, you'll hear this note, which is a low note on the tray. And the tray has effects on it, and we're going to turn them off at some point as well and show you what that's all about. Fascinating thing. So, there's only one effect on this, you know. And it's uh, Native Instruments Replica XT. A fantastic effect that everybody should have in their uh, in their arsenal, in my opinion. It's just fantastic as a delay. And um, if I go into it, I can tell you what effect I'm using, in case you do have it and you're curious. I'm using uh, the effect called... Are you going to tell me? Padland. That's what I was using. Now let me turn off Padland, and just so you can hear the sound ordinarily. And I'll play the track from the beginning again. And what you get is this. No effects, just the sound of the tray roar. It's still cool, but it just doesn't quite have the same effect, does it? However, I can now play you it. Here it is. Does have velocity as well. See, multiple velocity layers. Because why not? The original note I can't remember. It might have been somewhere like that. It might have been C or D, uh, C sharp or D or something like that. It was quite deep and I was very impressed with the sound. Uh, and Derek has made it uh, tuned to correct concert pitch. It's fantastic. It's such a great instrument. And. Um, yeah, the mod wheel actually takes it further away from you in the room, so... Yes, multiple mic positions. Yes, I recorded them like that. I was that sad. What can I say? And you can download these, by the way, from the description links. So, at some point, if you want to, you're going to have to go in the description anyway and have a look. Now, uh, it was suggested to me that I show you what happens when you use the note repeater with this sound, because it uh, can ring like a bell, and it's fascinating how it happens. So, let me show you what happens when we go into the Logic Note Repeater. And this is fun because 
I can hold the key down on the keyboard. Then I can move the motor wheel up. And it rings like a school bell. Crazy or what? Good sound though. So you could use that to, uh, as a, an alarm or something. So that's quite fun. Now let me get back into the effects section because I want to re-enable the effect and then show you what it sounds like when you ring it. So let me go down one octave here. Oh, went down too far. So that's without the effect on, which is the sound we hear in the beginning. And this Padland sound, even though it's from a delay plugin, has reverb characteristics and it's really, really fantastic. So I'm going to uncheck um, the bypass. So now when I hit this key, it does that. It's eerie, it's beautiful, and it's amazing. And I said to myself, right, I have to use this. I absolutely have to use that. That's just so cool. Love it. So now if I ring this like a bell again with the effect on, I've also set it up so that if I press the key in, it actually does velocity because I'm using aftertouch to make it ring like that. It's an unconventional but very, very cool sound and I thought you'd all appreciate something like that just for how different and cool it is. Right, let me show you the next sound, the watch case. The watch case was recorded with an Allen key in my house. And as I said earlier, it was gifted to me by my lovely wife um, for Christmas. She didn't know that it was going to be as cool as it was when I got it, uh, but uh, it is. Right, I have to uncheck two effects in this case. So the watch case plays at A440, um, or it would if I knew why it wasn't playing, which is really interesting, actually. What have I done? Anyone know what I've done? I've killed it. Never mind, I'll get it back. Ah, oh, it helps if you turn off solo mode. Hashtag just saying. Okay, so this watch case... I need to turn off the note repeater again just briefly. Does that. One note, but again I recorded it multiple times. Multiple layers. And also round robins in this case. I hit it with an Allen key and recorded it in my upstairs bathroom and Derek turned it into this playable instrument and it plays all down the keyboard of course and that's quite fun so I again I'll, I'll play this and put it in solo mode while uh, I go and return the effect on low ding I'm going over to the watch case Turn on the effects. There's two on this case. There's a reverb and there is the delay. And they, they join forces to make this thing happen. Pardon me a second. Let me just press a button over here. For some reason, I have freaky noises happening in my headphones. Right, it stopped now. So this plays to time, um, as you might be able to tell. The sound uh, plays at uh, in time. If I put the metronome on. And this just adds to the tea tray. So if I solo. That's what I was trying to do. So now the two tracks play together, the tea tray and the watch, two sampled instruments, handmade, and they're both cool and they both fit together nicely. So that's what that does. Now again, I'm going to show you what happens with um, note repeater and the watch case. So I'm going to disable, not that, 
I'm going to disable the uh, delay and the reverb. And again, we'll go into the note repeater like this. So that's uh, with the module at lowest setting. So if we're going to ring a bell, probably be around here, move the module up. And again, the um, holding down the key firmly uh, triggers aftertouch, uh, which uh, makes the thing play harder or softer. Really interesting. So you can have a bell or an alarm clock. Just so. I'm crazy, huh? But it's kind of fun. Now, let me put the um, the effects back on, and then uh, you will hear what happens when the effects and the note repeater kick in at the same time. Right, unbypass that and unbypass that. I've let go of the keyboard, hello. Delay's doing its thing. So by just doing these few things, you can get some very unusual and interesting noises. And I thought you might find that of interest. I know I did. I mean, imagine starting a track like that. Great intro sound. Repeating bell, some delay, some reverb. It's freaky. Freaky but cool. So that is that. Right, let me turn that off now. And uh, leave that as it was. Right. Unsolo that and unsolo that. Now, of course, Rise and Hit comes in near the end, uh, as it does, because Rise and Hit is uh, a very important, in this case, not even an intro sound, but an outro sound, and it just goes. So it really is at the very end of the piece. 19 bars in. So you've heard it all now. That is Watch the Tray. And as I usually do at the end of these things, I will play the track to you in full now, once again, and uh, ask you to subscribe, like, and share. Did you like that? I hope you did. Guess I'll speak to you again soon, next time. What will I bring you next time? Well, I guess we'll find out together. As usual, thank you for watching. Be good, and behave yourselves.